then flies in our apartment, which appear in supper especially, would say the following, father fly would tell baby fly or son fly. He says, you know, this Zechariah Sitchin is immortal because my father told me that his father told him that as long as our family flies can remember, Sitchin was always around and he always looks, looked then the way he looks now. <clears throat> so this whole notion that came out especially in the Greek tales, the Greeks sometimes uh, referred in the tales of Homer to the, the so-called gods as the, the immortals, they also called them the giants and so on, uh, they were really not immortal but their extremely long life in in the eyes of the Sumerians or of mankind was really not that long. Now, could they live in their terms a hundred years or a hundred twenty or, or two hundred years? Now, you know that in the Old Testament, uh, mortals, men, who were closer genetically to the time when that genetic manipulation had taken place, lived much longer. Uh, there's the uh, mention of Methuselah uh, in, in the Bible. There's the mention of Enoch, who lived 360, 365 years until he was taken aloft uh, and, and never really died on earth. So, uh, the answer to your first question is, yes, they could be on earth those fantastically long times, as far as we count the years, but to them, there were just so many few of their years. I think another thing to bring in, and you've mentioned it there, is that they were masters of genetic engineering. Yes. And if they can do that, make a Neanderthal woman what we are today, they certainly could use that genetic engineering on themselves to extend life. There, there are tales, Bill, uh, that, that speak of their uh, reviving, reviving the dead. There is a tale of the goddess Ishtar who, um, who, who died and through radiation was revived mm -hmm. and so on. Now the, the second part um, of your question... Can you uh, hold on to it? <laughs> While I do the second part of this over here. And Barbara, you stay right there and Zachariah will answer the second part of your question. Yeah, Barbara. Well, the second part, Barbara, of your question was... Well, my uh, name is Carol, and oh. I have written to you, so I <laughs> I would like to be known as Carol. Oh, sorry. Okay. My computer said Barbara. Sorry. All right. <laughs> well, Go ahead. are you sure you're Carol? Yes. Okay. Uh, the second part of your question was, uh, are they still here, or if not, will they come back? And uh, this is something I really... I am uh, disinclined to discuss at this point because I am answering those questions in my next book and I'd like people to buy it and to read it so you'll have to forgive me but I would prefer not to answer. Okay. All right, now you've, Thank got, you very much. you've got something to hang your hat on there Yeah. and look for the sequel to The Wars of Gods and Men which has been uh, published by Avon which is one of our largest paperback uh, publishers. The, uh, the books were available just about everywhere. And while you're in there, you may want to ask for Stairway to Heaven and certainly The Twelfth Planet, the two previous books that Zechariah has uh, written. And I will guarantee you, they'll hold you spellbound all the way through. And we want to hold you spellbound for another hour, if we may. And we're talking about some fascinating stuff that comes out of the ancient writings of the ancient Sumerians about a group of celestials who came here started the whole thing, and even gave us our first nuclear war. We'll find out more about that in this next hour. You're invited to come in and listen to Zechariah Sitchin. I'm Bill Jenkins. It's Open Mind. And just to kind of update you in case you just tuned in late, Zechariah's latest in his series of books is called The Gods of Wars of Men. It's available on Avon. It's in paperback. It's everywhere. And he is dealing with information that didn't come out of his mind other than the research that he did into the ancient Sumerian writings. And those ancient writers that go back thousands of years are telling us an incredible tale of a group of people who came here from another planet, one that swings widely in uh, the system of planets that we live in, uh, gets into our area about every 3,600 years, 
And when it's in close proximity to Earth, they started visiting Earth and these, and its wild swings, these uh, elliptical swings, caused our civilization to begin, not only in its physical manifestations and what we are and what we look like, but our society as well, had wars because of us and the planets, and we have carried on. We have carried on in that tradition, uh, unfortunately. Zechariah Sitchin. Zechariah, welcome to Hour 3. Uh, and they gave us our first nuclear war. Right. 2024 B.C. Uh, the central point of that was a spaceport in what is now the Sinai Peninsula. Right. And the area around the Sinai Peninsula there certainly looks like it had been into some kind of war, doesn't it? It does. There's a tremendous crater left there, and there's no, there's been no explanations for it hitherto, and I think I'm offering the only plausible one. But it's not an explanation that came out of just your imagination. It's in the ancient records. It's in the ancient writings, and it's in NASA photographs from space. It's amazing to me that those old writers should know about nuclear bombs, spaceports, spaceships, genetic engineering. Uh, and the list of technological wonders that they knew about then is uh, staggering. Well, it's amazing, uh, one word to use, others uh, are uh, less generous still, they say incredible. Well, incredible means not to be believed, and I try to stay away from that word <laughs> right. as much as possible, because I think that what you have written is something that is uh, worthy of... Uh, of looking at it and makes more sense than anything else we have seen. I just don't believe that those old writers were anything other than historians. I think so too. As a matter of fact, Bill, I, I would not have written my books and certainly not have uh, allowed them to be published before I myself was absolutely convinced beyond any doubt that those texts are telling us the facts that this is not mythology, this is not fantasy, this is not imagination. These are facts that we read in those ancient texts, what really happened in ancient times in prehistory. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And they were telling that story at least to the best of their ability. And uh, they give us characters, a cast of characters. They give us stories that would make a magnificent motion picture, but it would be one that has a lot of historical validity to it. And if you'd like to talk to Zachariah during this last hour, let me give you the numbers. All of our numbers end in talk. In Los Angeles, 520. In the San Fernando Valley, 990. In Orange. Oh, Bill, um, I'm glad that this is Ivan, the uh, Stillmore Wind Turbine Man, and I'm really glad that you finally had Zachariah Sitchin on as your personal guest. I've heard you talk to him on the phone, but I think this is the first time he's been a personal guest, isn't it? That's true. Um, Mr. Sitchin, I've read both of your prior books, and uh, one question I'd like to ask is about... The Smithsonian Magazine recently had an article about platonics and, um, and the theory. And I would like you to comment on um, would the result of the collision that you talk about in your books that occurred um, uh, with, with the Earth, and the Earth is the result, with the um, asteroid belt, which was called the um, bracelet and so forth, yes. w would not, uh, after the collision, would not there have been a logically... Um, rearrangement of the land mass uh, just to achieve balance which would have um, uh, given rise to the platonic theory yeah you're talking about our our earth right about our planet right right now obviously that is what happened because according to the Sumerian uh, cosmological views that are expressed in detail in a uh, what was called as called poem or the epic of creation the ancient name was Enuma Elish. It's a well-known translated text, not made up by me, which describes uh, how the whole solar system was created, describes the invasion of the solar system by the planet from outer space that uh, the Sumerians called Nibiru and the Babylonians later in honor of their uh, supreme god Marduk how it was drawn into the solar system, how it collided with an ancient, one of the earliest planets in our solar system, uh, which was called Tiamat, meaning mother of life. Mm -hmm. And Earth is just the, the, re the half, a remnant that is 